Just following up on the last video that I did comparing the three very small portable radios, um, a viewer made a comment about how they liked their small radio that was a couple decades old at this point. And that got me thinking uh, about the following question, which is how well would a tubed radio from, say, the 1940s compare with one of the more modern radios, for example, the Eaton Traveler 3. And so I figured that um, it'd be kind of interesting just to tune around the bands and, and see how it performs. This radio, I don't recall the exact model number, uh, and so I don't know the exact date, but this is probably safely uh, a 1940s vintage radio. I have done work on it. Um, when I came by it, it had been uh, partially restored, and I went through and fixed a few things that I thought could be improved upon. But I haven't aligned it or anything like that. Um, so I've had this on for probably half an hour, warm, warming up, so it should be pretty stable. And first I want to do is uh, just tune through the band rather rapidly and uh, see how dense it is with signals. And then I want to go hunt for a few of the usual suspects here on the eastern coast of the United States. So I'm going to turn this up and um, then I'm, I'm going to be quiet and I'm just going to tune through the band and uh, show just how sensitive even an old All-American 5 tubed radio is. So I'm starting at the top end of the band up around 1600 and I'm going to work my way downward. It's interesting how the label here, I'll just zoom in for a moment, is labeled in, you know, 155, so this would be 1550 kilohertz and 1400 kilohertz and so on and so forth. So it's interesting how they did the uh, numbers back then in terms of convention. Notice also they use the old nomenclature of kilocycles instead of the accurate kilocycles per second or the modern term kilohertz. Uh, and then also, I, I just love how they have this dual pointer, one end of which points to the frequency and the other end points to the wavelength. Um, okay, so I broke my promise. Now I'm going to be quiet and tune through the band. That's the flamethrower at 1600 megahertz, uh, 1600 kilohertz that I mentioned earlier. From the other direction when they see me coming in the there's a force. So we're hitting an audible station on every AM channel.
and it starts to get quiet down at the lower end of the band. You hear some heterodyning. Plywood and your home structure. Invest in that last one was obviously a very strong local station. Okay. So certainly this is um, at least as uh, dense with signals as you would get just kind of casually tuning channel by channel through the band with one of the smaller radios. Um, and, and that's easy to show. So what I would like to do now is go after some of the usual suspects and tune them in and then tune them in on the uh, Eaton and uh, see how comparable the signals are. So I'm going to start now from the bottom of the band and go upwards. That's a local station there. Get granular. I mean, that's obviously a very strong local station at 630 kilohertz. And if you didn't hear that, the announcer just said it was 650 WSM Nashville. So that's a nice find. And on this, we'll just happen to be at 650. So there's the Grand Old Opry. Okay, comes in stronger in this orientation. It's not uninteresting that the, uh, just tune that down, it's not uninteresting that the axis of the ferrite in this is that way. So that means that the magnetic field that goes this way due to a vertical tower off in that direction will produce the strongest currents in that antenna. So this radio has a loop of wire, several loops of wire, wrapped this way around the back panel. So the axis of the ferrite antenna is collinear with the axis of this antenna, which means that when the, this radio is in this orientation, stations, in this case, to my uh, southeast, will be stronger. And when this radio is in this orientation, because the antennas are similar, similarly placed in space, this will be the strongest orientation for that signal. Okay, so uh, that's WSM. By the way, we can show how strong the loop couples into this antenna by placing it next to the radio and tuning it, bringing it into resonance. A couple of days, members of the committee that ranks the top college football teams <laughs> And so there it is, quite strong. Okay, uh, let's continue now uh, and keep going up here. And that is WLW Cincinnati. 700, and, and there they just set it. Uh, I don't know what that oscillation is, that tone. It's not usually present. Uh, possibly there's some sort of RFI uh, going on here in my shop. All right, let's keep going up now. You can usually find Zoomer radio at 740. I think that's Zoomer Radio in Toronto, right there. Which should come in stronger if I reorient the radio. Okay. That actually is almost certainly Zoomer Radio. We can check and see if that's the same song by going to 740 on this. 
And that is in fact the Stray Cat Strut, as advertised. It's a very strong signal coming out of Toronto. So, so far we've had Nashville, Cincinnati, and Toronto. Not a bad showing. Let's keep going up here. WSJ. I'm not sure where WSJ is. But I bet I can get WCBS at 880. Let's see. And that is almost certainly WCBS 880 in New York City. Let's, let's see. That's not. It's actually 810. It's actually 810 kilohertz. That's 880. WCBS, quite strong. So again, New York City there. And keep going up. That's 980 kilohertz. It's a local station. Hellbent on making the playoffs, and they've seen everyone else fall around. That is WMVP 1000 Chicago, which means that is 1010 WINS New York City. And WBZ Boston is usually right here. Uh, and that actually is Boston. They're talking about the Boston News. It's usually much stronger. It was a few minutes ago. as well. I'm Walter Storholt reminding you that our next broadcast on the football side of things will begin I with the Reed Stewart pregame show at the beginning of the next season when North Carolina travels to Berkeley to take on California WBT in the first game of 2018. Now, as a network, Charlotte. our next broadcast will begin at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night I would just bet. UNC basketball gets ready to play talking about the UNC. tournament championship game. Well, let's see if we can get... Corner of the end zone. 11:20, which I believe they just said was KMOX, St. Louis. And that would probably be 11:30 Bloomberg Radio, New York City. Story of accumulation phase of your All right. Well, I'll stop there. And just kind of close out this now long video by tuning in WBZ a little bit more strongly with the loop. And there it is. If you take the loop away, it gets a little less strong. So there you go. Just some fun with a 1940s vintage tubed radio. It's uh, It works and it works well and it's just a, a very very nice technology. Hope you found this interesting. More next time.